So we're out here starting our winter cruising, which is wonderful. Nobody's out here. It's beautiful. Today it's flat. But it's not always that way. We were just talking about our bridge and how much we absolutely love running the boat from up here. Much rather do it up here than in the pilot house. Yeah. It, it dawned on us. There's about 15 things on this bridge that were, were must-haves. Uh, when we thought about not only cruising in the Pacific Northwest, but also Liveaboard. Yep. And so we're going to share those with you, and one really nice to have right at the end. Before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe. It really helps us out, grows the channel, and uh, we can bring you more of this content. We're going to start with number 15, which is access. On this boat, from the pilot house up to the bridge is the only way to get up to the bridge. It's inside, a lot of boats have access outside from the cockpit. It really depends on how you use the boat as to what is more important to you. Ours is inside, keeps us warm and dry. If you're fishing, you might wanna have it out in the cockpit to have access to and from the bridge. Number 14 is grab rails. We are at the top of the boat and it's a pendulum when it starts swaying. And when you're at the top here, it can get a little tippy. So having grab rails everywhere, that's here and here, even uh, to close the hatch, we can grab that. And that is important to keep you stable so you don't fall over. Number 13 is music. And that might sound like, oh yeah, you just need to have music so you can enjoy yourself, which is pretty cool. But sometimes our runs can be up to nine hours. We cruise eight to 15 knots and it can become pretty monotonous. You need to be looking for flotsam, other types of things that are in the water that could do damage to the boat. And so having some music actually helps out a great deal to keep the mind pretty clear um, and not kind of doze off. Now we've got a fusion stereo that's in this. It was pre-installed in the boat. If I had to do it again, I would have just got a bunch of these JBLs. You can actually take multiples and connect them together. Um, they're just Bluetooth. They also have a charge in them as well, so you can charge your phone with them, those types of things. And when they become out of date and obsolete, which a lot of electronics do, just get rid of them, get new ones. And you don't have to drill holes in the boat and all those types of things. So if I was, like I said, to do it again and spec out a new boat, I would just do Bluetooth speakers like this. Number 12 is lighting. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, especially if we're going to be doing off-season boating, the lighting is, uh, well, the days are short. Uh, the other thing, you know, if we have a lot of lighting up here on the hardtop that we really do enjoy so that we can use the space not only to run the boat but for entertainment as well because every inch of a boat needs to have dual purpose. They're just small. It's like a tiny house. Uh, the one thing that's probably missing in this bridge is a red light that you can have on uh, during the evening and when it's dark out and be able to run the boat, still have light in, in this area, but it doesn't wash out uh, you know, basically everything outside, so you can still keep an eye uh, outside the boat. Um, we do have one of those in the pilot house, which kind of forces us, unfortunately, into the pilot house when we're running at night. But that would be one change that I'd make to this bridge, but lighting is key. I think in any bridge. Number 11 is storage. It's important to have plenty of storage on a boat. You've got to take advantage of every nook and cranny. And up here on the bridge, under the seating, we've got storage under almost every single cushion. So you can store your life vest, anything that you will need on the bridge, or just to put it away and out of sight. Number 10 is USB chargers. On long runs, your phone tends to get low on battery and you need to be able to charge it, especially if you use it for backup navigation. Then that way you don't have to worry about your phone ever running out of battery. Number nine is having plenty of seating. Up here on this bridge, we've got tons of space for seating and entertaining. On some bridges, they only have one, maybe two helm seats, and it has to be dual purpose for us, because we like to entertain and occasionally take a nap. Number eight is cup holders. 
Believe it or not, this boat didn't even come with any cup holders up on the bridge. Again, like Carlin was talking about, this boat will sway side to side and get quite a pendulum effect up here. And if you've got, you know, pop or some water or whatever, it's going to be all over the place. So we had to do a couple things. One, we got one of these uh, clip-on ones that just goes right on a rail. That works pretty well, and now it's actually ends up being where we keep all our binoculars. Um, the other thing that we found over time is instead of having to drill holes in the boat or use something like this that attaches to a rail if you don't have a rail, is these toadfish beverage coolers. They're pretty cool. Um, they will not tip over, and if you lift them straight up, they come right off. So this is ended up being our go-to now when we think about cup holders. Uh, you know, you can use them on the dinghy, anyone that basically has a flat, smooth surface. So you no longer have to punch holes in your boat to put in cup holders. Uh, the one other thing that you can do, which is definitely going over the top, and it's nice to have one of our friends got us a Dometic uh, cup holder that actually is pretty cool. When I say cool, it is physically cool. It has a cooler in it. Uh, these things, well, you can get them at the boat show. It's the first time I saw them. Get them on Amazon. We'll put links to all the stuff that, that we're showing you here. But this thing is super cool. And not only uh, does it cool your beverage, but it also has a nice blue nightlight to it. Number seven is having a table. Not only to be able to use for charts when you're running the boat, those types of things, or be able to put down your binoculars, uh, but the other one is, obviously, we were saying this has to be a dual-purpose space. And this table, when it's nice out, or even when it's not, uh, we'll come up here and we'll have dinner. Uh, it's also nice that we can have lunch when someone else is running the boat. We can switch back and forth, still be able to be with each other and talk and keep an extra set of eyes out on the water. So this works out really well. The one thing you don't want to have is a table that just sits on a base that can move around because as the boat moves, that thing is like an unguided missile. So we changed up the table that we had before that just sat on a base that, you know, anytime you got waked, you were fearful of your life, uh, that table taking you out. So we put in this taco setup that they have um, and it, it basically just has multiple places that we can just slide the table into a receptacle it doesn't move around, it's fairly sturdy, um, and we can move it to different places as well. So if we wanna get the table out of the way, we can move it you know, over into this area on the other side of the boat on the bridge. And now that table's out of the way and you, know, you can use this space uh, any way you want to as well. But that's worked out really well for us. And again, it's nice and stationary, so you never have to worry about moving around when you're underway. Which brings us to number six is dehumidification, which is super important. Up here, it can get mildewy, get wet. The Isinglass can get all steamed up, just like your car. And it's important to keep that under control so you can drive the boat and see where you're going. This goes for the whole boat in general. We did a video on how to keep humidity under control throughout the entire boat as well. Number five is ventilation. Up here on the bridge with all the Isinglass, you can feel like a greenhouse up here and it can get extremely hot in the summer. So we've got two hatches that we can open up as well as on the front, the back, the sides, we can open up all the Isinglass and get a nice breeze blowing through here. So it is comfortable to drive the boat. Since you're gonna be running the boat from your bridge, you wanna make sure that we have redundant electronics and controls all the way across the board. I've seen a lot of bridges that really just have a helm with your steering wheel and your throttles and gears, and that's it. Um, it you really need to make sure that you have everything else, your trim tabs, your autopilot, you gotta be able to control your engines of starting and stopping them as well. Um, and here we have a full host of redundant electronics that we have up above here, as well as down in the pilot house so we can Look at your radar separately from your charts. You can do overlays. You can even go through and obviously have your depth sounder and things like electronic uh, helm and dashboard. Uh, if you don't have all of the gauges up on the top side that you have down below, and this is a great example. Our fuel, we don't have fuel gauges up here and that's something you really need to have. So we have that uh, via NEMA on our electronics as well. So we do have that redundancy here. And it goes right down to even having 
a VHF that sits up on your bridge as well. Number two is having a seat that you're not gonna fall out of. A lot of boats that we looked at, they were open, they rocked, they weren't stable. We upgraded to STID. It has the armrests that both come down, they're adjustable, we can move the seat, and it doesn't budge. Number two is being able to see over the helm. You can't drive a boat if you can't see over the helm. So this original one that came with the navigators, terrible. So the STID, we can adjust it. over the helm. Which brings us to number one, which you've probably already figured out watching this video, is having a fully enclosed bridge. If you're up here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, if there's a handful of months that you can run up on the bridge where it's nice and warm, but most of the time it's cold, it's wet, it's miserable up here. In fact, our last boat had a bimini, but it didn't have any isinglass down the sides. So I spent a lot of time up on that bridge, cleaning it. That was about it. I was always down in the pilot house running the boat because it was absolutely miserable up on the bridge. This and having a hard top, and even if you just have canvas with isinglass around it as well, really goes a long way to keeping you dry, which keeps you sharp, which means you can run the boat much more safely and much more enjoyable as well. And like we said, being able to use any area as a dual purpose now, this is an area that not only, obviously, do we run the boat from, as we've talked about today, but we entertain from. We have dinner up here. It's a blast. So it adds another, probably, 250 square feet to our living space. And when you're a live aboard, every inch counts. Which brings us to the bonus round, which is how we use this space, not just in the ways that we've already described of eating and running the boat, but this also turns into a really cool entertainment space. Check this out. I know, this is a little over the top. All right, it's a lot over the top. But we have a wireless projector, which means when the night kind of rolls around, we have nothing else to do. Uh, we've got the boat all tidied up. I'd like to come up here and watch a movie. Like I said, a little over the top, but it's where we live. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe again, and we'll see you next week.